a relation is a subset of a cross a. In other words, you take two things from a and you get either a yes or a no. Is this in the relation? Are they related? So if we have the set ABC, is ABC related to ABC? A is related to A? Yes. A is related to B? Yes. B related to A? No. C related to C? Yes. And so forth. Relations can have different properties. An equal sign is a relation. Less than is a relation. Subset is a relation. Being related by blood is a relation. So what are the common properties they have and which properties do each of these relations have? Here are the common properties. Reflexive. If everything is always related to itself, that relation is reflexive. Non-reflexive means if x is never related to itself. We don't have a word for sometimes. Symmetric means if x is related to y, then y is related to x. Antisymmetric. If x is related to y and y is related to x, then x equals y. You have to have some sort of equals defined. Maybe it's just identity. Transitive. If x is related to y and y is related to z, then x is related to z. Every interesting relation I've found has that property of being transitive. Comparable. Either x is related to y or y is related to x for any x or y. You can always compare x and y. An equivalence relation has three of these properties. It is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. A is related to B means that they're sort of in the same group. They are the same in some significant way. Equal sign is an equivalence relation. Congruence modulo n. Congruence in geometry, like congruent line segments or angles or triangles. And similarity in geometry, like triangles having the same shape. All of those essentially are partitioning all possible, say, triangles into the triangles of different shapes. All the ones that are the same shape but different sizes go into the same similarity equivalence class. The other kind of relation that you're likely to encounter is the ordering. Things like less than or equal, less than, subset or equal, proper subset. There are three kinds. They have different names and the, unfortunately the naming is not consistent from book to book. So here's what I've typically found. A strict partial ordering is non-reflexive and transitive. A partial ordering is reflexive, transitive, and anti-symmetric. And a linear ordering, or simple ordering, or total ordering, all those names get used, are reflexive, transitive, anti-symmetric, and comparable. So which relations have which properties? Less than or equal. 2 is less than or equal to 2, for example. Everything is always less than or equal to itself, and so it is reflexive. If 1 is less than or equal to 2, 2 is less than or equal to 3, then 1 is less than or equal to 3. It's transitive. All of these are going to be transitive. All the interesting ones are transitive. Now, is it symmetric? If 1 is less than 2, is 2 less than 1? No. Antisymmetric. If A is less than or equal to B, and B is less than or equal to A, then A equals B. Yes. So it is anti-symmetric. Is it comparable? On the number line, yes, you can compare any two numbers. So we could specify less than or equal on the real number line. So it's reflexive, transitive, anti-symmetric, and comparable. So it is a total ordering. That's where we got the idea for the name. You have put the numbers in order. Strict less than. Is less than reflexive? No, it is not. 2 less than 2, false. If 2 is less than 3, is 3 less than 2? No, it's not symmetric. x is less than x is never going to be true, which means not only is it not reflexive, it is non-reflexive. Is it transitive? Yes, it is. If A is less than B and B is less than C, then A is less than C. Is everything comparable on the number line? Yes. Are they anti-symmetric? Well, technically, yes, but it's what we call vacuously true. You're never going to have a time where A is less than B and B is less than A, so it doesn't come up. So, technically, 
it's anti-symmetric. So the difference between less than or equal or less than is reflexive versus non-reflexive. So less than is a strict partial ordering. Subset or equal. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then yes, A is a subset of C. Transitive. Is something a subset of itself? Well, this is subset or equal, so it is reflexive. So we have reflexive, we have transitive, anti-symmetric. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then A equals B. Yes, anti-symmetric. Comparable. For any two sets, is it true that one of them is a subset of the other? No. Neither of those is a subset of each other, so not comparable. Which means we have a partial ordering, but not a total ordering. Likewise, if we go to proper subset, then the only thing that changes is that anti-symmetric becomes vacuously true, and reflexive gets replaced with non-reflexive. Nothing is ever a proper subset of itself. Another example. On the integers, let's say A is related to B means that A divides B. So for example, 2 divides 4. 3 divides itself. 4 does not divide 2. And so forth. That is a partial ordering because there are some numbers that don't divide each other, like 5 or 7. But anything divides itself, so it's reflexive. If A divides B and B divides C, then yes, A divides C, so it's transitive, like all of them. If A divides B and B divides A, then A equals B, so it is anti-symmetric. If A divides B, that does not mean that B divides A, so it is not symmetric. So that's divisibility. It is a partial ordering. You can't always compare everything. One last example, a weird one. Suppose on sets, x is related to y means that they overlap. They have a non-zero intersection. So any set would be related to itself, so it's reflexive. If x is related to y, then y is related to x, because if they overlap, they overlap. But if x overlaps with y and y overlaps with z, that does not mean that x overlaps with z. So that's an example of one that is not transitive. So this relation is reflexive and symmetric, but not transitive.